What's going on, guys? Time for a little YouTube recap on Z Day. A little bit of a blowout after PPI good data and CPI bad data. So let's take a peek at what we were looking at today and how we uh, day traded the uh, system here today. So I was looking for a pop breakdown back down or up today. It didn't really matter. It was, it was all about confirmation today. And we had a couple different Fibonacci's to use, and let's go over that and then our systems and how we use them. Now, pre-market yesterday was the CPI five-minute candle, and I have that fib to the high-low, okay? The first five minutes of the CPI. I pointed that to the downside, and 504, or 509.54 would have been a great downside target for that. And the PPI today, um, with no reasonable doubt and bad jobs data, we pushed up. Um, and even the Fed speak said it's in the recent rise in productivity makes no sense. Um, economic resilience versus Fed rate policy. So essentially, the layman's terms here, we went from the federal fund dot plot to uh, three hikes down to two hikes down to one and a half or potentially less all the way back up to September, right? So CPI report says inflation is not fixed. Inflation is still sticky. It's still hot. And there's no way the feds can cut rates. Okay, well, we know when the cut rate comes, that's when the market goes down because shit's broken, right? But right now with the market keep going up and inflation sticky, we're just gonna keep going up, up and up. And uh, as we mentioned before, we did say that there is um, not really too big of a you know, just parabolic, you know, move to come slamming back down either. So if we did pick up again, well, it's going to be based on the metrics of, uh, you know, some oscillation. And if we look at a daily chart here, you notice we're double bottoming right here on that 50 RSI daily, right? No matter what the max says, it's straight down, 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 but the market's still holding on to literally nothing, which we see that a lot. Uh, on the pump. It's kind of like quantitative easing without the quantitative easing on these algo force ups. Whenever they say something, it just jolts. So let's take a look at the intraday fibs and how we play them. So the rule of thumb for our fibs, right, is the 100 to the zero. And we play indefinitely outside the golden pockets while we have them. So if this is our Fibonacci box, went a little too far on that one. And this is our box, that means this is the golden pocket above or below the 50, right? So when we seen the wash, and yesterday we went long into the into the uh, 100 and to the golden pocket long, that's what you would have looked for, and then another seemingly long up into the next day, because if you are above the 100% FIB, you're gonna look for it to retrace at least to the 50 golden pocket, okay? And then if it holds that 50 golden pocket range, you will be going to the 0% FIB, thus completing a retrace of the FIB box entirely if it were to break under the 100 fib we walk it down to the 1618 extension then we find direction it either comes back to the 100 and goes down or it continues its road under the 1618 so let's take a peek at what happened from the cpi fibonacci alone okay um that one got into the ppi push right so we came into yesterday's lows kind of obvious how the data was going to get pressed up here and uh vix and the way the market was looking there was no way it was going to go down so they were going to fabricate the data up which they did big old pop and then i wanted the continuation under right the 100 fib so if we were staying under the 100 fib here i wanted to go all the way down to our target 509.54 well that obviously has to break under the ppi fibonacci box that we'll talk about right now and continue under did that happen nope we got squeezed out reverse so let's talk about the confirmations on how that happened and what you would look for so with our oscillation here we had the ppi pop now same as uh the cpi the ppi's data candle is fibbed out high to low on the five minute okay so you see back here same thing um now, as we come into oscillations, the same rules apply, okay? So if we come in, we'll zoom this down up, to the PPI's FIB box, let's draw that, high, low, bam, bam. We worry about the golden pocket over under, right? As we just explained. So if something breaks back inside the 100, we look for it to go to golden pocket. So when this broke and traveled down, we shorted the crap out of this down to the golden pocket, right? So it found support at golden pocket right here and never went to the 100 fib. Now the rule states, if the golden pocket picks back up support, we will travel back to the 0% fib. So what did it do? No confirmation. It did not give you a breakdown. It held the 50 all the way back and then squeezed outside of the zero fib, right? So this is a point where you would take your Fibonacci because we have a confirmed support. We have a confirmed golden pocket hold, right? Now let's look at our intraday oscillation. So we had it right here, we had a cross coming from the back, RSI 
back to the top side. So we did have momentum there. One minute probably looks a little better, but we're going to stay on the five. And then you've seen that squeeze happen when it was back into the top channels. Now, once we were into the top channels here, that pullback, those lines were uncrossed the entire time. And this is all Elgo force up. This is just all Elgo BS, shorts getting squeezed out, so on and so forth. But remember the CPI FIPS, right? If we hold the golden pocket, let's look over here. This is the golden pocket right here. See, so once we were over that, we are going to go to what? That's right, the 0% Fibonacci on the top of CPI, probably leading into tomorrow or shit, I don't know, squeezing the last part of the day right here. But if we are above the golden pocket here of the CPI, we have a chance to come back to the 0%. So let's talk about PPI one more time. So that golden pocket range and what the reversal looked like here and how we were looking to manage through this, right? I wanted to go short. I wanted to go all the way down. We have two different Fibonacci's setting us up for this beautiful 509 uh, or 504.90s, 509.40s, um, level four uh, target, right? But we didn't get confirms of that. You don't just pick a level and guess and hope it goes that way. We always confirm. So the PPI right here box, again, came back down to the golden pocket, broke back out, held. So what do we do with this? Well, when we have a confirmation of the golden pocket and it starts higher lowing and continuing, you see volume on the buyer side coming back in. You see it, okay, it might be reversing. What do we do? Well, we're going to change the Fibonacci of the PPI. We're going to point it back to the upside, right? Because we have confirms going to the upside, not the down. So you're going to take this, you're going to go high, low, and you're going to point the Fibonacci to the upside for the extensions on your targets. Boom. So now with CPI's data, box is back here. Here's the high and here's the low. Remember, that's the CPI. Okay. And the golden pocket right here. Okay, nice and easy. So once that golden pocket is released, we're going to come all the way back up here. Well, what's stopping us? Well, the Fibonacci. So the PPI would have told you, okay, we squeezed through the 1618. Where are we going? 2618. Where's our next pullback? 2618 right here. Boop, right back down. So now we're at the 10 SMA daily, which is this beautiful little blue line here. And we have an opportunity to see if this wants to push back to the 0%, which could totally happen. We might just conk out here today because of the 2618 from the PPI uh, box that's giving us our extension and that's um, 261.8 uh, and that's like you know you, you get up there and that's that's pushing it that's a lot um, so inevitably our CPI even whatever happens overnight or whatever world news we get we're going to most likely dominate back up to the zero percent even today uh half hour maybe not today it's possible but maybe not today maybe we get one, big one of those nasty candles something like that at the end so what you're going to look for is a continuation off the ppi structure for tomorrow so we're going to come into the day tomorrow and we're going to use the same two fibs on a friday we're going to see what the overnight brings us on this weird ppi squeeze if it decides to drain out or not well it can drain out and fail back up here at 421 where that daily gap it used to be at 521 or it's just going to continue to loop the 10 sma so the 10 sma daily close is what i'm going to be very paying attention to right here so this is the 10 sma daily it's structured inside our minute chart so we can see it but uh, this guy right here, if he starts to close above that 10 SMA and starts to loop push up, well, we're just going to have to hold on tight and just watch the thing go back up because it is confirming back to the upside. If not, we will see downside. I would have preferred to get the downside because we did pick the top here on our weekly spy, which was a fib box down here, right? And it blew through the 1618 back to the 100, right back to the 2618. We picked the very tippy top by the penny of the market from that fib, came down. And now it's kind of just looping in between. I was really hoping for at least a 50 SMA type, but we're getting bought up ahead of the 50 SMA um, probably through the summer here. And everything is just a dip by here yet. Now it could be months until we get the big old smackdown. And I'm playing some leaps uh, short here. I've been shorting every top, just adding into every once in a while we hope new peaks or new highs. I'll grab a couple more leap year out puts because I do think after either we get, you know, further all time highs, we will get that haircut. I'm thinking at least 16 to 20% for myself. Um, and we do have an intraday gap that I'm very, 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 very um, worried about right here under 500 on spy. There was an intraday, which means regular trading hours, not pre not after hours, there was a gap left on spy. Uh, that does not happen. There's a gap and go day right here. This also is an untested um, Fibonacci point of the box. So this weekly Fibonacci that walked to the 1618, 2618, once it falls back down to the 1618, it makes a decision. It either holds that and continues higher for the 4236, or it breaks down and comes back down to the golden pocket that was never tested. Here's the golden pocket of that weekly. And lo and behold, that gap is very close to the half whole psychological dollar 500. It's at like 498, 12 or just, just about an unfilled gap on SPY. Um, 
just sub 500 and once it once the spy breaks back down into this 100 fib we got a straight shot you know down to the golden pocket and the zero fib which would fill this gap because the zero fib is dead nuts right under that rate at 498 so uh, once we get back into this weekly box in under 5079 with some trend we will be coming back down to face that gap eventually so uh, we'll be looking for that in the long term. So whatever happens uh, for the rest of the time here, we're still in downtrend. We're still hitting lower lows and lower highs. Maybe this is going to get sold back down. We'll see. But I'm going to keep my long terms going. And last but not least, we'll cover the VIX real quick. Um, because we did say that we did have gaps on the way up. So again, a FIB structure here that I had on the VIX, we predicted the uh, volatile downside for CPI off this as well. Here's your golden pocket right in between above or below the 50 which is always 3820 or 618 and then once this comes back down again if it holds the uh golden pocket where do we go if this is our fib box here's our golden pocket held held where did we go boom now we don't really there's no such pre-market on vic so this is a real tag this tag the zero percent now where does it go well if it stays underneath the golden pocket we have gaps to fill at 1453 and a 100% FIB back here to test on that structure. So once we lose this, we come back down and we hunt down these gaps here and we get a, another long push. Now the dollar is, is ranging up very good and giving us signals and bonds are pretty crazy too. Uh, as the dollar breaks out over the 100 EMA um, on its daily chart. So we can take a quick peek at that too. And that is a big precursor for obviously market down. So it's gearing up for something. We just don't know the catalyst. We were hoping for CPI's continuation down, didn't quite get it. Um, but once this the dollar on this daily, it doesn't it does not extend too far. So once we get, you know, like base dollar here, that was a pull in the market. This was a big long in the market um, back here in October. That was our biggest long signal. We are at deviation plus two at the dollar right here. So the end of coming into October. That was going to be a, a, a dollar relax, and you were going to see SPY during that October find a bottom. Um, and you can see that on the daily chart, pretty obvious as well. So um, last year's that October, here's that bottom right here as the dollar topped, the market bottomed and caused that big run. So if the dollar uh, continues to run and the market just gets manipulated and holds up here, eesh, I don't know, because the dollar will drop and then we're going to go parabolic and it's going to squeeze even farther on anything earnings or, of course, how everything is ran in the world, ESG scores, right? Companies care about ESG. It's all fake. They don't care about consumers. Nothing is retail. It's all about ESG. So... We'll see what those earnings provide. We'll see what the rest of the day provides, and hopefully we can get another grandiose day. But that's a little fib lesson and recap what we're looking for. And now we're going to continue over or under the 10 SMA daily, right? And I think if it holds up long, we're going to get one more dip tomorrow, right? We'll back test like the 666 five-minute moving average. So it's a simple moving average. 666 is the data. And let's say it comes back down for another loop and it comes back up to double top here. We get a live tag of the 0% FIB. So you're going to look for that 520.50 tomorrow there on SPY. Um, and we buy we dip by overnight here through the after hours uh, on the futures and let this thing run up hopefully and continue. So a little recap and projection for tomorrow. We'll see you guys soon.